Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this final Media Mastermind keynote address of MIPCOM 2017. I'm Lucy Smith, and I'm the MIPCOM Conference and Content Director, and it's my pleasure to introduce Dominique Delport. He is Global Managing Director for Havas Group that recently became part of the Vivendi Group. As a Vivendi board member for three years and chairman of Vivendi Content, he is in charge of all strategic projects around new technology, new content, and new forms of storytelling. This includes Vivendi's international Emmy Award-nominated Studio Plus app that delivers new series in 10-minute chunks. It's just one way that Vivendi is taking a leadership position in the evolving TV landscape. So it's fitting that in his keynote today, Dominique will offer insights into the future of content and formats, as well as the impact of new devices and platforms. Once Dominique has completed his remarks, he'll be joined by Marjorie Payon, journalist at France 24, France 24, and founder of I Love Productions, for an in-depth Q&A, and it promises to be a forward-looking and a stimulating conversation. So now, please join me in welcoming a real TV innovator, our speaker, Dominique Delport. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to be uh, here and to tell you that tale of two cities. We're going to talk about new formats, new storytelling, and new platform. Two cities, two worlds. One world, which is the free content world, essentially ad-funded. It's all about advertising money that represents nearly a totality of revenues. And the paid world, subscription-based, RPU, churn, name them. Two cities and three main battles I'm going to try to discuss with you today. The first one is the Abel's War. The second one, the Subs War. And the third one, Mobile, because that war will be the war of the future. We're going to talk about a lot of fights and blood, no ice and fire, and tech dragons. Why tech dragons? Because these companies that you know, you use, you love, sometimes you dislike, coming from US, coming from China, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, or Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, are entirely reshaping our landscape. As a media guy or a content guy, you just can see every day proof of this disruption, proof of that complete transformation. First of all, the eyeball world. And yes, it's true. Money follow eyeballs. It is an intangible rule in our industry. Print, radio, TV, outdoor, digital, always mon money follow eyeballs. The platform have started to redesign the world and this started a few years ago. The first industry that has been directly hit, remember, was the music industry, with a lot of piracy platform. Streaming platforms are now reshaping this industry for the good. But remember print. The print business has been completely disrupted. If you look at that chart, the business print was making a few years ago was exactly the level of the business in 1950s. And if you look at the digital revenues that they have been extracted from that change, you lost dollars and you get digital pennies. The bad news is the same platform are now going to TV. If you look at the average time spent by US citizen in front of their TV and in front of digital screen in 2013 for the first time, digital outweighed TV. Three years after, ad spending on digital were superior than the TV spending. Money follow eyeballs. It took three years, but the disruption is there. And the tipping point was last year. For the first time, you had $72 billion spent on digital and $71 billion spent on TV. This is a radical shift. But what is really impactful is the way that money is distributed. Hundreds of players on the TV business, just two. 
in the digital world that own the future. It doesn't mean that the other don't matter. They just don't get the money. If you look at the growth of the business, 103% of the growth came to these two players. All the other digital activities decreased last year. We have the perfect and unprecedented duopoly with Google and Facebook in that free content world, a world where every content is financed and subsidized by advertising money. 80 billion for Google, 26 billion for Facebook. We know that Google has the best discovery engine, but it has been also one of the most impactful ROI with analytics that seduce the advertising community. Facebook has the best targeting engine, but now it's backed by a community of two billion people connected to each other. So yes, ables are growing fast. For the first time in our media history, we have four platforms beyond one billion users. This is the new scale of the game. If you want to enter in that arena, 100 million is not enough. You need to reach the billion. Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, Messenger, and you can see WeChat in China, incredibly smart, incredibly integrated with the payment system of WePay that already gather hundreds of millions of Chinese citizens that can play with King of Honor, that can buy, that can share in one click. And if you look at Instagram, it's the four, the force of the weapons that the Facebook company has in front of them. Four out of the five top platforms are owned today by the company of Mark Zuckerberg. And if we look at the audience, it's amazing to see how even the plus 50, I call them eyeglass, eyeballs with glasses, are more and more socializing through platform. Double the time spent on social media last year. Mipcom, do you know Kelly Networks? Just to look at that disruption on a content point of view. Do you know these content brands, Oh My Goal, Gamology, Genius Club, or Beauty Studio? Two billion views on social media last month. Just after BuzzFeed, just after Noses. And probably you've never heard of these network of content producer. But what they do, they literally look at the social distribution, understand what people want, what they talk about, produce fast, A-B test, algorithm is everywhere, and then they deliver high numbers of views. You need to understand this platform because now the audience is the media. And if you don't understand audience, you might have some issues. But if you do that well, using data, you can reach superfan, the way David uh, was just discussing with John Feldheimer. One key question, how much Facebook and Google and how fast will they grab, which is the obsession, legitimate obsession, these $71 billion of US TV money? Well, they boost their video inventory and they master programmatic advertising. It's probably not something you, have, you are very familiar, but it will have a big impact if you want to manage the future of your free-to-air TV business. First of all, stories. Stories everywhere. Stories started on Snapchat and then the copycat in every platform across 16 and 17. Now, 40% of these stories are video. Tomorrow, this video will be ad-funded. Watch that we discovered earlier today with Ricky and Danielle. And obviously, on the YouTube side, big ambition as well to become one of the next TV mogul. It's already the first destination for US kids and the most loved brand for US kids and UK kids. YouTube is their first destination, whether on the tablet of the family or on TV using connected TV. One billion of original content will be spent next year, but watch out, don't forget the long tail effect. Only 1% of the video views on YouTube represent 95% of the views. Uber concentration. 90% of the video on the platform have less than 100 views, and the 500,000 channel are under 1,000 subscribers. That's probably also why 
YouTube is moving to the other side of the landscape, trying to grab some direct subscription dollars from YouTube Red on YouTube TV. Not easy. Every platform has a DNA. My belief is that YouTube DNA is free. Let's go back to programmatic and advertising, because it will have a big impact. You understand that, or you might be lost in that transition. Let's go back to, as you know, the Mad Men era, where we have all these guys, like Harry Crane, trading business. 97% of the money go to the TV channel. Then with digital, more people, more optimization, more online, online always, and of course some technical costs, only 85% went there. And it was quite clunky because the same ad for everyone and people were bored. Now, with programmatic, you can target one by one according to your previous purchase, according to what you like, what you dislike. If you have food allergy, you won't be receptive to the same ad. It has to be meaningful, obviously, more efficiency, more effectiveness, and a lot of money in the middle of the 5,000 ad tech companies that are here. And sometimes it's a broken ad chain. And the CMO of Procter & Gamble, one of the biggest advertisers, called that the crap trap. You have to fix this. And this is what is currently done. Why Facebook and Google are so efficient? Because along that value chain, they are everywhere from inventory to software to bidding system to platform, they maximize every gain. And obviously, sometimes they're not neutral because this is how the world works, from decade, from retail to other kind of trading. And uh, out of us, we are very proud to have launched this year the first fully transparent platform to help advertiser, but also media owner, to navigate in total transparency. You need to behave in these wall gardens. Is it tough for that TV empire to be back and strikes back? I mean, TV is still TV. We have these two days seen how strong and vibrant TV are. Uh, ask any UK citizen how summer was, and they will ask, Love Island Summer. It was the TV show everyone was talking about. For five hours of live TV, you have one hour of OTT. Live TV wins, especially when it's about sport. 90% of people who love sport will never substitute their TV. The other offer are complements, not substitute. Not yet. And obviously, when it's about ad break, 94% are visible during your TV viewing time. And TV, it's all about new format and new opportunities and new way to conquer the world. At Vivendi, we saw that we had also to try to embrace that change and build some new formats. This is what we have done using C8 as prototype to pilot and test, and if it works, then roll out. This is what we have done. With that game. Desconosciuti. Eine Aufgabe, ihr exaktes Alter zu erraten. Intuitia. Observation. Perspicacia. Bonsoir et bienvenue sur le plateau de Gaspillet. Szép estét kívánok, hölgyeim és uraim, ez itt a pénzt vagy éveket! Uhádni múlj meg! Áno, egy ezt meg túl! A publikum, de hát szíta a hozzá, és mit rátni dabály! Szó! already 20 countries and more to come. You need to create, you need to innovate, you need to crack new formats, then, then the capillarity and connectivity of that world will help you uh, win big. Free content, TV players are still time. Google and Facebook are coming, but it will take time to grab this dollar, at least, if you focus on programmatic advertising. This is what NBC has just announced. Even top shows like This Is Us will be trade in terms of advertising block through programmatic. This has to be your obsession if you manage TV assets today. 
You need also to partner and find right alliances. TF1, ProZibon, Mediaset have started building this new inventory. NBC just announced its deal with Snapchat to target millennials. This is the second obsession. If you don't talk to millennials, if you let them away, advertiser will let you away. And it's really important to understand that this is still the key target for 80% of the advertiser. They want to be connected with the people who are designing the new world. The subs war is really different, and the disruption is already there. It started with pay TV, obviously, paid content, subscribers, and the newcomers, with new offer, with lower price, and big ambition on a longer term. The pay TV is still a business under pressure. We know that all over the world. It doesn't mean that that business will have hard times ever. Because we can see that there is a way for this pay TV player to have a brighter future. First of all, huge opportunities. When you own content, when you own IPs, when you have professional understanding premiumness, you have the right team to build the pillars of your future success. OTT enables you to be everywhere without the cost of implementing boxes and subscription chain physically in the country. Look HBO, they just announced the rollout in the next 10 months to 15 months of HBO everywhere. Canal has done also great deals with Telco that enable not only the premium to be up for the first time, and we hope that it's going to be a gain net of 100,000 subscribers, but also millions of new subscribers through wholesale deal with Telcos. Telcos are the natural partner of the TV players. You need to be everywhere. You need to be ubiquitous. Even a platform like Hulu enable you with additional subscription costs to have HBO and Game of Thrones on your screen. And this is the same with my canal. We have to understand the code to be able to provide culture. And you will see in all that speech that code and culture are really the two pillars that a new manager in that TV content business need to master. There is still a great value for money. For 1990, you have the two most expensive football players in the world, Kylian Mbappé and Mr. Neymar, and this is something that only pay TV player from Sky to Canal can provide. But obviously, the original content race has just started, and you can be mesmerized by the amount of money and the ambition of these new players. First of all, the number, 455 original series have been produced last year with the remarkable Hans Med Tale and its Emmy Award success. Pop culture is at the core of this new franchise and it's one of the success of Netflix. We can also credit them with the interactive storytelling. They're trying with DreamWorks, a new way of interacting with content. And obviously, the slate they have announced yesterday 80 movies in 2018, which is bigger than some studio. So, is the game over for this studio? I don't think so. You can have this carpet bombing and 8 billion announced for next year, but look at who's in that play. You've got Universal, Fox, Walt Disney, Warner Bros, all together within the Hulu platform. And when you look at the level of investment of all these legacy players, we are nearly around 50 billions. There is money and resources to build the future. You just need a new operating system. Sometimes you need some harsh decision, like Disney deciding to plug off its content from the Netflix platform. But we are entering in the world of subscription, and it changed everything. When you look at video and audio, how they are already disrupted, when you look how people in the music business Price the consumer, don't price the product. This is also how you're going to engage the fans with their preferred bands. It's all about access and assets. And you need to manage your assets, but you need to find new access. This guy is the king of subs. It's Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. Why? Because he understood that it was not the product that matter, but how people will use it. With a Kindle, the ROI is 12 times, because people every year, even if Amazon is losing money on one Kindle sale, 
they earn $130 every year with what people buy through the Kindle. And this is exactly the same with Prime. Astonishing number, 60% of American consumer households own an Amazon Prime subscription, 60%. This is mainstream. It means that they can sell what they want. They can sell entertainment for sure, they can sell cloud services, news with the Wall Street Journal, education, professional services. This is just the beginning. And when you have too much, when you need curation, use your voice. Hello, Alexa. Alexa is the next weapon to literally dominate our living room and kitchen. 70% of that assistant voice market is already owned by Amazon. And what happens when you ask Amazon to buy battery? Amazon suggests you to buy Amazon battery, not Duracell battery. In 15 months, Amazon became the biggest seller of battery in the US. 30% market share when Duracell has 24%. So they spend billions with the rabbit, you know, the white rabbit and the little drum. 24% market share, Amazon 30. Only a great brand can protect you from the voice disruption. This is just the beginning. So will Alexa rule Britannia one day? Time will tell. But for sure, they are incredibly impressive and scary contender. Finally, the mobile wars. Five billions, five billions, that's the scale of the mobile business. And it's obviously one out of five user, mobile-centric. You saw all the stats. It's already the first screen. Dailymotion has released a new interface, fully mobile first, with a pure video play. Please download it. You will have great fun with premium content. Messaging is activity number one. Mobile gaming is activity number two. Uh, Gameloft, a Vivendi company, uh, is proud to release next Thursday Paddington the Game. It's free, you're gonna have fun, and it's gonna help you to tease and wait for the movie that will be in a few days in theater and in January in the US or in Asia. Content everywhere. Mobile means new creativity. And we had an example with Ricky uh, from, from Facebook of the shows that are licensed by Facebook, but also by Apple, like Carpool Karaoke, or Phone Swap by Snapchat. A true explosion, live is everywhere. After Musical.ly, have a look at Lively. It's coming from China, and it will be another huge hit with rewarded UGC, like eSport. People and audience are paying the star they see on screen to reward them from the entertainment moment they had. New form of interactivity, your new scam, watch Mosaic from Steven Soderbergh with HBO. Audio storytelling is back on mobile. It's called Calls, and it's a Canal Plus production, 10 by 10, audio only, because podcast is really a, a new form of creativity that people seem to love, especially in their downtime. And mobile will be the entry point for VR and AR. It's years. We're talking about the next big thing. It never happened. It is truly coming. It's coming because of Facebook Oculus. It's coming with a new iPhone that gets that AR kit. It's coming because the market starts to crystallize. Yulu is betting on it with its uh, uh, VR offer. And if you have been able, and the lucky one, to leave the experience that Mr. Inaritu the Oscar winner from The Revenant has provided, living as a migrant on a fictionary border with a backpack barefoot in the sand with your Google. It's an unbelievable experience. Scientists prove that the souvenir you have from a VR experience equal the souvenir of your current life. The brain can't make the difference. It's so intimate, there is no distance between the screen because you are part of the screen. AR with Snapchat as well, an AR kit from Apple in 400 millions of phones. So yes, it's coming, it's gonna be mainstream. But the big thing, and as a nearly conclusion, is the premium mobile content. Jeff Katzenberg announced raising two billions, two billions to create what he calls smartly new TV. We can trust him and we can also remember 
that Vivendi was the first company last year to introduce premium mobile content in the world. It's called Studio Plus, and we have been incredibly proud to launch it at the end of last year and have the first result. Five million subscribers. Five million subscribers with a slate of nearly 50 series, 10 by 10. 10 minutes, 10 episodes. Have a look of Studio Plus 10 months after the launch. Studio Plus, the Vivendi Group's digital creation studio. In only 20 months, Studio Plus has created a catalog of 32 10 by 10 series, developed about 100 projects, and read more than 2,000 pitches from all over the world. Studio Plus has produced a variety of different series, exploring numerous genres, including horror, zombies, and now, documentaries and musicals. These series were shot in 30-some countries in four languages. <laughs> oh, hang on, mate. I've got to jump. George Michael's on the other line. All right? So, yeah, it could be his only call. Oh, all right, right I'll call you back. I'll call you back. Studio Plus worked like a research lab for new talents, particularly writers and directors, to invent new modes of storytelling. I think it's, in some way, to bring the cinema of genres in a much more dynamic and more agile format and that it's supported in other technologies. A bold track record that reflects a new approach to production. Where is the money? Ah, but I want to tell you. You won't believe me. Studio Plus is a pioneer in production strategy by working like a startup with a small, agile team with complementary skill sets. By shortening production time, less than one year from first pitch to delivery, thanks to daily support and an integrated chain of command. I can't believe this. By reducing costs, the writing process is supervised so production feasibility is factored in ahead of time and spending is optimized to support artistic choices. Studio Plus is also a pioneer in terms of editorial choices by exploring the world's complexity with authenticity and artistic freedom. By creating lovable characters that go beyond standard archetypes, Studio Plus is a format pioneer by inventing the 10x10 series format so in sync with today's viewing habits. It's also a template for multiple formats from 100-minute e-movies to 2 times 52-minute TV fictions. Media critics, influencers, and festival juries are already talking about the innovations from Studio Plus. This is Studio Plus, and we are incredibly proud and happy of that uh, kickoff that has been fantastic with a wide recognition and these two nominations for the next Emmy Awards late November in, uh, in New York. Remember, our future, your future, will be not only about content. It will be about container. It will be about context. The ability to understand what consumer wants to watch and love and cherish but also the platform you have to intimately master because this platform, this distribution channel will have a growing influence on the way your content can live and thrive. And finally, the context. If it's downtime because you're queuing somewhere or you're commuting with your mobile, it will be a different screening experience. And you need to think of how to better address that need for content. Let's be sure that the self-driving car of tomorrow will be your new living room. So yes, it's all about code and culture. And curiously, if you look at the top 15 companies in the world, the top 16, actually, on the left side of the slide, it's mainly code company. On the right side, it's historically the MIP com companies and the content owner and producer of the world. We are very proud at Vivendi, now with Avas, to be part of that game and try to understand better code to produce better content and increase the way European culture can roll out and can be a success for everyone in the room. Thank you. And to be continued with Marjorie.
Oh, so, so, I hope it's just not like a perish or die future you're actually foreseeing for this industry, but let's follow the money first, if you may. Um, we're definitely at, an, at a, a time of content deluge and lines are getting more and more blurred uh, between all the shareholders of uh, this uh, ecosystem. Brands are creating their own studios, content creation, creation studios, and traditional content creators are left with nothing to do but trying to compete uh, in that world. How can we cope with that kind of trend? First, you need to be optimistic because even with that kind of crazy technology evolution, you have still print, still radio, still out every media is still there. And people have never consumed so much music. And the music industry was under a huge threat 10 years ago. Now it's again golden years. So you need to be optimistic, but you need to face the truth. You need to understand technology, you need to teach codes to your teams, and you need to move the discussion with your audience in order to better understand your consumer. If you don't understand your consumer, if you don't collect smart data, respecting privacy, respecting GDPR in Europe, and so on and so on, but really being closer, it's not, I produce, I ship, I'm done. That doesn't work anymore. You need to understand better who you're talking to and then start a conversation that will last. The franchise of anyone, an IP, we mentioned Paddington. Uh -huh. Paddington tap into people who know Paddington since uh, their school years because it's a huge uh, a character uh, from, uh, uh, from its author and, and, and in, in the UK and the Commonwealth. Many countries didn't know well Paddington before. So you need to train them and teach them in a different way. Gaming is an entry point because people love gaming, casual gaming, especially for young women or not so young women and young guy or not so young guys. It's again that 10, 15 minutes of indulgent time where you want just have fun and, and, and brainwash your, your, your head. And sometimes you spend money on that, a lot of money as well. The freemium model is in the middle of uh, the two worlds I described. So I think that you need to understand that technological push, pressure and you need to understand how this platform works. We'll actually zero in um, the Vivendi approach in a few seconds uh, to that regard. But first, we say that content is not king anymore. Storytelling is taking over the part. I mean, storytelling is, is, is king. Uh, and the Amazon success is also a huge storytelling success. All these companies on the left have great storytellers probably the best of the world. They, they even don't really market themselves or spend money in advertising. Content is king, of course, but distribution is queen. And we live in that world where the, the king and queens are equal, which is, which is a great news. Um, you have as constraint as opportunities. The problem is to be sure that building the unknown, building the new, you, you stop investing on, on the old recipes that cost a lot and how you manage that legacy. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the main challenge is a human resources challenge. We need to help our people to transition from one world to another. Training is critical in every organization. Mm -hmm. The advertising business has faced several disruption. It's always by training people. I mean, we train at Avas uh, 10,000 people to programmatic. Even if they don't do programmatic, they need to understand that you move from media planning to audience planning, and it's radically different. So yes, the human resources uh, is probably something we don't mention so much uh -huh. in the entertainment business. Uh, we, we need to focus on that in the coming years, for sure. And code is definitely the new mother tongue. Sorry? And code is definitely the new mother tongue. I mean, look at how you react with an app. You know, we have only a dozens of apps that we use. It's all about the user experience. You download an app, Half the time, you never use the app you have downloaded. You just forget it. It's slide two or three. Uh, people are really uh, demanding now. They know what a great experience is. And they expect from you, whatever you are, a 100 century company, to have the same pleasure than a startup that didn't exist two years ago. And so you need to find that agility. And, and I think that for us, bringing Vivendi and Avast all together, uh, one of the entertainment leaders in Europe and, and all over the world with universal music and, 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 and so many assets, plus 
one of the top five advertising company with uh, 20,000 people all over the world. I think that it's, uh, it's quite unique, mm -hmm. it's quite unprecedented, but uh, it's really exciting. And actually, speaking of the uh, Avas Vivendi um, teaming up together, uh, would you say the main purpose here was to serve a synergy strategy for the group? I think that Vivendi, as we say, is one of the top 16 group there, but relied probably three or four percent uh, on advertising. Uh, very different from, from its peer, especially American uh, entertainment companies. So there are many opportunities there. Uh, I think that for Avast to have access to Vivendi Asset, it's great for all the brand we represent. And again, I think that we are entering a new world mm -hmm. and to understand the platform as well as how to produce premium content like Studio Canal and Canal Plus are doing or Universal Music with all its artists or Gameloft with its billions of games downloaded. I think that it creates a unique combo. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to us to extract value, value for the fans, value for the artists, value for the advertiser and value for the brands, value for our talent. But I'm super optimistic and, and confident that we are on a path on an incredible journey where entertainment is at the core because what people want is to feel emotion and they want to connect with stuff that matters to them, to their kids, to their family, to their relatives. And I think that brands are part of that. Uh -huh. Remember, the advertising business is a $600 billion business. The money has always been here to subsidize free radio, free TV, free print, and so on. And so it's great to have brand that wants to become meaningful and wants to do something good on the planet. Uh, it's, it's compatible with the business objectives. So I think that we are in a, in a very interesting path. Um, all the team are excited. Uh, 40,000 people, both sides, and uh, it's up to us now. Interesting indeed, but if I do follow you quite closely, um, actually, you're trying to master the entertainment ecosystem, like from traditional television to online content, even in real life with the Olympia Theater uh, for, to follow the customer journey. Um, maybe only a telco is missing to this puzzle, but it's open to you. Uh, would you say that you're applying yourself, like you're trying to bring together a close ecosystem? Is that the key to actually succeed in this jungle? I think that any company needs to think uh, with ecosystem in mind, for sure. Uh, good point. Second point with Telco, uh, we are uh, working closely with Telecom Italia, in which the company uh, Vivendi has a, has, a, has a stake, as you know. And I think that we understand better the Telco business. This is one of the reasons of the success of Studio Plus. Mm -hmm. You need to understand how Telco operates, because it's incredibly powerful companies uh, with hundreds of millions of subscribers already, and a daily link with these subscribers. So if we are able to bring our premium content in a Telco and platform environment, I think we're good. Uh, but you're right, I think that we don't want to pretend to, to be the, 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 white, uh, uh, the white knight, but if we can try to connect our great friends and platform from America, our great partners from Asia, and promote the European culture and the Latin culture with also a foot in Africa and uh, uh, thousands of employees already there uh, and, and some great initiative in Africa, uh, a continent that will matter more and more in the future and which is partly French speaking. I think that we have a, we have a, great, uh, a great journey in front of us. But it means agility, uh -huh. being humble, and still being passionate because passion only runs the world. So this is uh, what, we, what we want to achieve. Now again, we're all in the competition for the time and attention and of yeah. course engagement of our users. But I mean users of a lot of things in 24 hours. They can be users, they can be consumers, they can be viewers, they can even be voters sometimes, uh, and we can be those users ourselves. So how can we worm our way into this jungle? How can we actually engage in a smart way with new audiences? I mean, let's, let's take the example of advertising. People are bored with ads. Steve Jobs said, advertising suck. And I think that it's one quote I never forget. And why? Because the experience is terrible. Look at mobile advertising. 60% of mobile banner click are mistakes. So people literally spend more time trying to find the, 
the arrow instead of uh, uh, watching an ad. We, we, we have to fix that. We have to be much more meaningful with, with, with people and, and with brands. And we know that big brands have seen their market share drop because they're not relevant for people anymore. So our job is to bring that meaningfulness and to, to try again and again. If you understand what consumer wants, you can also ask yourself, what does he want to watch? And I think that we can bring in the discussion with content creators and the one we manage, um, uh, new tools, new technique. Um, look at a super fan. Uh, I was mentioning super fan earlier. When you love something, I mean, close to your heart, close to your wallet, eh? you're ready to spend more as soon as we can provide you the premium experiences or the great family or community experiences you, uh, you, you expect. So a lot has to be done. Yes, it's true, we need data. The success of Amazon, the success of Netflix is data-driven, no doubt. And the way we can collect data, the way we can extract even anonymized data, but just to better understand consumer, that can turn to be tomorrow a customer. That, that is at the core of what we do. That's also something Avast will provide to Vivendi with our data scientists and a huge algorithm experience. Because yes, I think that modern company need again to master both sides of their brain, magic and logic, <laughs> culture and code, and uh, this is the way. Which actually brings us to a question you actually mentioned earlier, uh, the GDPR. That might not ring the bell uh, like right now in this audience, but believe it or not, we're all data collectors those days. Um, how can we cope with this piece of regulation that's upcoming in May? So basically what it says is that you can't collect privacy data the same way. And May 18 in Europe, it's the strictest regulation in the world that will start. And company can be fine if they don't comply 4% of their uh, revenues, which is a lot of money. Uh, I remember a quote from Bob Iger, the CEO of Walt Disney. He was talking about Star Wars 8 and said, okay, Star Wars 8 is coming. I still don't know who watched Star Wars 7. So we live in a world where, except this technological platform, but a lot of huge, brilliant uh, entertainment companies don't have access to the data of the people who love their product and content. So we need to change that. We need to build uh, new ways of collecting and rewarding. It's a trade-off. If you don't give me something back, don't expect to have anything from me. But if you understand me better, like a friend, you can provide better entertainment, better experiences. This is really the, the, the bet we are, we're in. So there are regulation, and what is also interesting, culturally speaking, is Europe wants to fight back, and Europe wants also to promote its players and to be sure that the biggest company, which so often are the smartest in tax optimization, are also paying a fair deal uh, in order for all our ecosystem to be sustainable. And I think that people love choice, people love diversity. Uh, you, can, uh, you can adore a blockbuster movie and also uh, watch an independent uh, uh, series that uh, you, will, uh, you will adore in your uh, local language. So that's at the crossroad of what we try to build. Time will tell, but again, optimism, being humble, work hard, play hard, and yes, passion at the core which definitely gives you a full strength for your next presentation, the data wars. <laughs> yes, I mean, but don't forget, everything starts with content. And if you don't have the best stories in the world, no data to capture and uh, no consumer to delight. So we need to tell stories. We have in Europe phenomenal legacy. Um, and, and I think that again, Italian stories, Greek stories, Spanish stories, Scandinavian stories. There are so much to tell the world, and we are absolutely excited by uh, uh, the work we have, to, we have to provide in the coming months. Dominique Delport and what the future holds for uh, the content industry. Thank you so much for Thank your you perspective. Marjorie. Thank you for your attention. I think the Mastermind keynote session are now over. Well, let's go home to meetings. Exactly. Bye-bye, everyone.